transformed into an angel of light. Like we said last week, he's not this pitchfork holding person with horns and a tail. He's beautiful. He's made himself to be beautiful. He's made himself to be a little. It, it, it's simple. It's really simple. It's really simplistic. It's not a temptation if it ain't tempted. It's not a temptation if it ain't tempted. So if it's tempting, we know that's of the devil. There is no great, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, so we know that he has ministers, also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He said he got ministers. Mimicry. We're going to talk about rulers of darkness. We'll move rather quickly because we got a, got a lot of ground to cover, but I want to end on time. Rulers of darkness. Continuing in his deception of Satan's reign and file, descending order, Paul mentions the rulers of darkness of this world. This is, a, this is an amazing phrase from the word cosmos kratelos. And it's a compound of the word cosmos and kratos. The word cosmos denotes order or arrangement. The word kratos has to do with raw power. Thus the compound word cosmos kratos depicts raw power that has been harnessed and put under some kind of order. The word cosmos kratos was at times used to depict Military training camps where young men were assembled, trained, and turned into a mighty army. These young men were like raw power when they first arrived at training camp. However, as military training was progressed, the new recruits were taught discipline and order. All raw power, all raw manpower has was converted into organized disciplined army. This is the word Paul now uses in his description of Satan's kingdom. What does that mean? It tells you that, it tells you to me that Satan is so serious about doing damage to the human race that he deals with demon spirits as though they were troops. He take, he puts them in ranks and files and gives them orders and assignments and sends them out like military soldiers who are committed to kill. Just as men in the human army are equipped and trained in their methods of destruction, so too are these demon spirits. And once these demons are trained and ready to start their assault, Satan sends them forth to do their devious work against human beings. My God, I can attest to this because when I first arrived in basic training, you couldn't tell me. Couldn't tell me nothing. I was in tip-top shape, 19 years old, wake up out of bed and run a five-minute mile, running. I could do push-ups. I could do all this stuff. But it wasn't power under control. I didn't. Did, I had discipline, but I didn't have the type, the army type of discipline. One of the first rules and the things that they taught us in the army that you don't move as one individual. We had to get this down. They had to break us of this. They had to break us of the thinking that just because I got ready, it's full thirty in the morning. And they wake us up and they tell us we got 15, 20 minutes to get downstairs. And you've got literally a hundred guys in the bathroom aligned to the sink. People got to spend two, three minutes to brush their teeth, spend, go, go back and get dressed and everything. It's like a, it's like a, a, a chaos going on, so to speak. Everybody running. So I run downstairs. I'm, I'm lined up. I'm at attention. I'm ready. Sergeant drill sergeant started his countdown. When he started counting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I wouldn't care where you at. If you ain't in formation, you late. Dudes running. One, and they still running. Stop. You late. Everybody trying. What you mean I got push-ups for him? He late. No. Cohesion. We were a unit. We were a team. We were together. So if I wanted to be on time, I had to make sure that he was on time. And so they trained us to move and act like a unit. And so one of the things that God gave me a revelation on, and it scared, it scared me, it scared me at the first time when I saw it. I was in a, 
I have a vision. I don't know if it was it was in the body, out of the body. I'm like, oh, but all I know is I saw a demon face to face. I I see them, you know, uh, and I don't know. This is something that I, I don't know why God has allowed me to see this, but I guess He allows me to see it so that it remains prevalent or relevant to me on a day to day basis that. We are living in a parallel world. There are there's a spirit world operating at the same time as this physical world is operating. That's what we have to remain cognizant of, and we have to keep in our minds that there is a spiritual realm operating at simultaneously at the same time that the natural is going on. And so, I saw this demon standing about four or five feet away from me. And it scared me. My heart is literally jumping out of my chest. I'm just, I, it's, it's real. It's like, I know what this is. It, and one of the things about God, you know what I'm saying, it's not like I had to sit there and, and decide what this is. I knew exactly what it was when I saw it. And he was standing there. And one of the things that I saw was he had, a ear, he had, he had ears like a bat. He had a nose like a bat. But he had no mouth. You ever seen those movies where they depict those demons where they person, the mouth is missing, they don't have a mouth at all. A lot of these, these, these movies and these shows and everything like that, these wizardry shows and these people that are drawing, people think that, wow, they're so creative, they're getting influences. There's only two influences in this world. Who gave you this idea that an alien looks like this? Or when you saw this alien, did it, was it really an alien? But because you weren't spiritual, just call it what it was, you call it an alien. And so here I'm standing, and so the so immediately the revelation when I woke up, of course, when I, when I woke up, I heard cackling in my ear. That's a whole other thing. And I started rebuking the enemy in the name of Jesus. I was terrified and seeing this and now I wake it up. And there's nothing over here, but there's cackling in my ear. And I'm like, okay, enemy's trying to scare me. And so one of the immediate things that God gave me a revelation on is because this demon did not need a mouth because it wasn't in the rank of talking. All it needed to do was to listen and to take orders. There are demonic forces. There are demons that have been given orders because, like I said in last week, they've been watching us for so long to where now the enemy is sending you a direct attack. I know how to get you. If it's marijuana, I'm going to send somebody that's either being possessed oppressed by the enemy. See, some people, we, we like to think that the, 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 uh, we like to, the enemy like to have us think that people who are demon-possessed look like the movie Exodus, where the girl with the spin of the head and everything. We like to think that demon-possessed people look like that. No. Demon-possessed people look like Nicki Minaj. That's what that look like. Because otherwise, if it look like the spin of the head, I'm scared. I ain't going there that. Your, your tactic didn't your tactic didn't work. It didn't work. You ain't you, you missed it with that one. You know what I'm saying? But it looks it looks beautiful. It looks so luring. And so now when we engage in the with these demonic forces, because that's what we're doing, things can attach themselves to us. We're wondering why the grip of the enemy is so strong in a particular area. It's because what we've exposed ourselves to. Now, we think that, okay, because I'm saved or I'm born again, that I'm free from being possessed by a demon. Well, yes, you, you, you're free from being possessed in the spiritual sense from the demon. But he can still get in your heart and in your mind. He can still enter into your heart and in your mind. We're going to enter, we're going to look at that. See, nobody ain't teaching this right now. The enemy mad, but nobody's teaching this because people think that, Jerry, people think that if they don't look like the head spinning and everything like that, then I'm good. So we're going to look at something that ties into this in Matthew 12, 43 and 45. Because I want us to be I want us to be on point. Soldiers for Christ. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. 
Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with the wicked generation. Mm, 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 mm. We need to highlight this, circle it, put some blinking lights around it because this is very, very important. Here Jesus is talking about an unclean spirit. And he said, an unclean spirit has gone out of the man, and he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Notice that when the, when the demon was cast out, that he didn't, he wasn't destroyed. And it says, then he said, I will return to my house. He, he claims, I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he was come, he findeth it swept, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. The house that he's talking about can be a physical house, where a person who hasn't been born, or it can be a born-again believer, the house of the heart. What are you putting in your heart? Because the Bible says that once we're born again, we're made a new creature. But that our mind needs to be renewed. What is our mind? Our mind, our will, and our emotions is our heart. It's our soul. What are we doing to what are we doing to replace what it is that we swept out of there? Yeah, we we prayed and we asked the, the enemy to deliver me from this, from these, uh, from this, 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 this crack demon and this, this alcohol demon and this pornography demon and, and deliver me and the, the enemy left. Because one of the things about the the, the, uh, the, the, the devil. We saw in the, in, with Jesus that when Jesus rebuked the devil, he left. But guess what? He coming back. And so now when he came back, he said, man, you just swept up and cleaned it up. Why it look, why it looking good now, man? He ain't got no word in it. He didn't clean up, he ain't got no word in it. He ain't got man, listen. So guess what? Check this out. In verse 45, what he did was he got a little slick. Now, I was looking at this the other day, and I'm like, well, wait a second. Hold on, wait a second. Time out, time out. Well, hold on. Let me have a conversation like that. Hold on, Holy Spirit. If this be, I want the house to myself. But it says here in the text, it says, Then he goeth and taketh with him seven more spirits, more wicked, and they enter in and dwell there. So I think, well, why would he take seven more spirits more wicked? So now, one point, let's just say the dude just had a little alcohol. Demon. You know, he did a little alcohol. But now he brought seven more and more wicked. He brought a crack demon with him. He brought a uh, pornography. He brought a child pornography demon with him. He brought all these other things, and wow, and just everything like that. And so, if they enter in and dwell there, they kicking it. And the last state of this man was worse than the first. So the problems he had before, people thought he was off the chain then. Now he really off the chain. So now he really messed up. And even so shall it be also into this wicked generation. You know why he went and got those seven other demons? Because the first time you kicked him out, he was by himself. If you're in the house and you got to kick one person out, you might be able to handle that. But let seven people be living in your house. you got to kick all seven of them out. That's some strong numbers there. The enemy is not stupid. He's wise. He's calculated. He's subtle. He's all of these things. He's been here for thousands of years. We've only been here for some time. So he didn't see it. Yeah, okay, I know you're going to play in the name of Jesus. You're going to have to be slap the ball on you. Yeah, okay, all right, I got that. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave today. But I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm coming back with all of these cohorts that are more nastier, meaner, and vile than me. And he's saying, even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. We're seeing things played out in this generation. The world is getting darker and darker and darker and darkness represents the absence of revelation the absence of revelation the enemy wants people in ignorance and the way he keeps people in ignorance 
at least in the church sense, is that he puts people, ministers of light in there to give you fluff and no real word or revelation so I can keep you ignorant and stupid. So now when the real demons come at you, when the real fight comes on, all you know is some puffed up motivational speaking. You can't quote that to no devil. I'm sorry. You can't quote that to no demon when you're sitting up at night at 2 o'clock in the morning and you got this, 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 this big booty girl calling you on the phone talking about some come over. You can't quote no, well, we're going to be great today. And the world says that we're going to be movers and shakers and we're going to get a business. I better have some word to be able to say to this person, get me behind me. I better have some power on the inside of me to be able to rebuke that. When if I got something wrong and I got something dealing with, 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 with alcohol, if I got a demon dealing with, 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 with marijuana, all these different things, I got to be able to tell these people. It might be family members. Listen, brother, I love you, but I can't go that way. And be able to have the power and the strength to be able to truly resist the enemy. And so we see how important it is to guard our hearts because the enemy is trying to gain ground into your heart. In Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. This is why this is what the word of God tells us. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are light to those who find them, and help to all their flesh. Amen. My son, attend to my words. In other words, take heed to my words. Follow my words. Be obedient to my words. Incline that ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thy heart. So that building, that house that the enemy came and it was garnished and swept, if he had a came and seen the word in the midst of that believer's heart, he probably still would have tried to enter in, given the thought, but because the word, greater is he who is in me, that he who is in the world was trying to gain interest into my heart. I got something to fight with. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thine heart with all diligence. Keep thine heart. The another, the another translation of that in the Hebrew, keep means to guard. I wouldn't have to guard my heart if there wasn't an entrance to it. Jesus was giving us an illustration of that in Matthew 27 through 20 through 30. You have heard it that it was said to those of old, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks on a woman and lusts after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for, for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Jesus has given us another illustration of this right here. It says, you have heard it at the time, you heard that it had been said at the time of old that you should not commit adultery. Adultery, fornication, hatred, malice, love, all of those things. But, but I say unto you that whosoever shall look it unto a woman to lust, have already committed adultery with her already in his heart. It, it, he's not saying that the person just sinned. Let's rightly divide this. But what he's saying is because he's allowed it to enter into his heart, now the danger of him carrying out what's in his heart is very, very highly likely. There is a good chance that if you think about something long enough, that you meditate on it, and if you allow it to get into your heart, and I've, I've gone over this, if you if you mulled over what you're going to say to somebody, somebody said something wicked and vile to you, and then you, instead of casting it down, saying, no, I'm going to forgive them, you you, you you thought about it, and you processed it, and you said, no, I'm going to give this person a piece of my mind, and then you formulate the words, what you're going to say, how you going to say it, and everything like that. Next thing you know, it's in your heart. Guess what you're going to do when you see that person? You're going to say exactly what's in your heart. And then you're going to say, I just got to keep it real. No, Jesus said, no, you just got to keep it saved. And so Jesus gives a depiction, and if that right eye offend thee, plug it out. And, 
and cast it from thee. It is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not the whole body be cast into hell. He's given an example. He's given a, a, a parable. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. But it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not the whole body be cast into hell. Jesus is saying, basically, separate yourself. If there are some things that are causing you to sin or to fall, or it's easily besetting you, he's saying to separate yourself, cut it off. If there's a relationship, cut it off. If there's a, 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 a certain thing that you're predisposed to, to doing, cut that off. The, the, the avenue in which, the, the bridge in which it's using to get into your heart, he's saying cut it off. Some people don't do that. It's like the exit sign. Because the enemy usually attacks some type of enjoyment to the fact to the to the thing that he's giving you that feels good. So to cut it off like a soul tie, it hurts. Man, I feel good though, man. Oh, I don't want to cut off, but man, it was enjoyable. Man. He said, cut it off. And so lastly, in James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust, drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Yes. Talking about entrance to the heart, protecting the heart. James has given us a depiction here again. This all ties in. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempted any man. Every temptation comes from the enemy. That's why when, 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 when Job uh, was tempted, it, it was the enemy. God allowed the enemy to do what he did, but it was still the devil. And it says, when every man is, in, but when every man is tempted, when every man is, when every man is tempted, when when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, the lust we talked about, the flesh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, those are things that are already in man. So the enemy knows what inroads to use to get you to do what it is that is against God. <clears throat> it says, when lust have conceived, lust have conceived means giving birth. We know to, 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 to conceive, we talk about a man and a woman, when the, a husband and a wife, they come together and they, and, they, and they conceive, that's being pregnant. Pregnant means that it's in the heart, if you can get that in the picture. That's why the Bible says, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In a sense, you're trying to put on a spiritual condom over your head and you're saying, listen, I ain't trying to get impregnated by anything that's ungodly. And so I don't want that seed to get into my heart, to get into my mind, so I'm going to cast it down. When the thought comes, cast it down. If there's an inroad to which the enemy is trying to use to bring that to you, cut it off. And so he's giving us wisdom. And he's saying when he is drawn away in his own lust and size, when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So let's say if, if we allow it to come in, and he's giving us an illustration. When, it, when, it, when it's conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When it gets into the heart, it brings forth sin. When a woman is pregnant, she pushes out a baby. It's just simple. And when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. The ultimate goal of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So with all of these demonic forces, and we're looking at spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, lastly, and then we're going to tie, tie all of them. The Greek word for uh, wickedness is phoneria which means depravity, and particularly in the sense of malice and mischief, plots, sins, iniquity. Malice is defined as a desire to harm others and to see others suffer extreme ill will or spite. Law, the intent without the just cause or reason to commit a wrongful act that will result in harm to another. That's what that is. And that looks scary, but when the actuality, when people are, when, when, when influencers coming, it looks beautiful, it looks alluring, it looks enticing, it looks like all of those different things. Spiritual wickedness in high places. This is all the way up in the heavens. People who are calling the shots, you know what I'm saying? People who are, who are in, the, in the spiritual realm, you know, uh, who are influencing. 
So now we see all of these different influences are around us on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're wondering sometimes why we, we, we feel a particular way or we think a particular way. That's why the Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We have to recognize as well that just because it's talking about dark, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places and all of these things, these things as we saw in the word of God as the enemy has transformed himself into an angel of light and made himself ministers of light, it's prevalent in the church. We have to be mindful of that. We have to understand that and guard against it. Ultimately, we are victorious and we're overcomers in Christ Jesus. The reason for us digging into the word and studying and understanding this is so that when we see certain things going on, we can see the enemy a long way off. We can see an enemy operating uh, in, 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 in someone's life, in government, and all of these different things. We can pray against it. We know how to pray. We know how to recognize what's going on. When we see it in the church, we know how to encourage and admonish someone to come from up under that that the demonic spell, that teaching and that, that preaching, so to speak. And so we need to let everyone know that they're overcomers in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. We go back to the, to the word in Ephesians where it says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The power of his might. We've been given might. We've been given strength. We've been given the ability to overcome the devil in all of, in all of the, uh, the kingdom of darkness. That war has already been waged and won. All we got to do is walk in it. We have to walk in it. But we have to continue to feed ourselves with the word of God. We have to do those things that I was talking about in weeks past. Reading the word, prayer, praise and worship, doing things for others. Praying in the spirit. All of those things that keep us built up. And so at this time, 